Welcome to the Sarah Ladies Podcast, the sister brand of Subtle Asian Real Estate, where our mission is to get more people that look like us participating in the real estate industry. We invite experts to not just talk about real estate, but also about our unique identity as Asian women and the cultural values that shape who we are as investors. I'm Anita Wong. And I'm Tiffany Lee. We're both real estate agents and investors based in the Bay Area and New York City. Whether you're a seasoned real estate pro or just starting out, there's something for everyone here. So pour yourself a glass of wine or boba tea and join us as we celebrate the achievements and unleash the untapped potential of AAPI women in the real estate industry. Welcome to the Sarah Ladies Podcast. Now let's get on with the show. But first, a word from one of our fabulous sponsors. Hey, Ryan, how's your student housing room hacking system going? It's going awesome. So we're pulling in $40,000 a month, and I'm getting ready to quit my W-2 in about a month. That is awesome. Congratulations. Was it easy to pull off? No, yeah, I basically had to scale it over a course of seven and a half years. Um, but really using the room hacking method, I was able to skyrocket my portfolio so quickly. That's awesome. I'm sure other people would love to learn how to do this. Is this something that you're teaching? Yes, I do. I teach a six month coaching program. Uh, it's one on one coaching with me through Zoom calls just like this. And basically we go through market analysis, deal analysis. We'll cover renovations to increase your profitability, as well as the marketing and the management and creating a full system for yourself uh, along with teams. So you basically have this cash flow for life. You should be bringing in about $1,500 per month in cash flow per property. That sounds great. Where do I sign up if I want to learn more about this? Yeah, so we actually have a discount, a 17% discount if you go through my website, www.newbierealestateinvesting.com backslash sorry ladies. Awesome. Again, that's newbierealestateinvesting.com slash S-A-R-E-L-A-D-I-E-S for that 17% discount. Thanks so much, Ryan. We'll see you at SARECON. All right. Thanks, Tiffany. I'll see you guys there too. Now on to the show. Hey, Pod Squatters, welcome back to another episode of the Sarah Ladies Podcast. We are so excited to have our second Jenny of the month to jump on our podcast today because today we have none other than Jenny Locke, Jenny from the block, who is nothing short of an empire builder in the realm of real estate as well as philanthropist and investor. If you don't know her, Jenny leads an incredible team of all women realtors here in the Bay Area called Zen Coast Homes and is a co-founder of Zen Coast University, where she has built an incredible education platform to help people build their passive income portfolios. So we get to know Jenny when she hosted our first, um, when we hosted our first Women's Leadership Summit with Lotus Rising Retreat with Jenny has a part in O-Name. I was moved by her workshop on goal setting, and I just had to share it with everyone. And just the incredible way that she has accomplished so much in such a limited amount of time. And on top of all that, she still finds time to be generous, purpose-driven, while still maintaining laser focus on her big, hairy, audacious goals, as it were. Jenny, have you heard of that term before, big, hairy, audacious goals? Mm -hmm. You have? Okay. I was the, oh, I guess, is, is that a West Coast thing or is it like a thing? I, maybe I'm living under a rock because I saw that in the script this morning and I was like, that's such a strange phrase. <laughs> and then Anita's like, okay, maybe I'll shave it off. And then I, I kept laughing because I was like, <laughs> Okay, right? <laughs> Maybe it's a Silicon Valley thing, but people know it. There's like an abbreviation for it. Behag well. or behag? <laughs> behag? Yeah. It's weird. It's a thing. It's a thing. Okay, I, I believe you. All right. So, anyway, go back. Sorry for that. Uh, little, uh, <laughs> uh, little. What are you, oh my gosh Tangent there, but we'll, we'll get back to it. So, some could say that Jenny has locked eyes. That's L O K. ED uh, on on her goals. And I, I love, I want to say, Jenny, I love that you've really utilized that pun in all of your marketing thing. <laughs> it's so clever. If you guys follow Jenny on Instagram and, and follow her her uh, social media posts, you'll, you're going to see that a lot. And it really sick. It's very sticky, Jenny. So kudos to that. I love how creative you are. Yeah. Um, so we're so happy, happy. So we're so happy to have you, Jenny. Welcome to the Sarah Ladies podcast. 
Yeah. We're so, I mean, so excited to be here, just being in front of you, amazing ladies, just spreading the word, seeing how much you both have done. So I'm honored. Yeah. I'm so, I'm so happy to see you since uh, the Women's Summit. It's mm -hmm. been like, a minute now it's been a few months so jenny you've done a lot in a very short span of time if anyone's watching jenny looks very young like she's accomplished what people would probably accomplish by like age 50 or 60 you've really built an empire for yourself so what would you say of all these great amazing things that you've done so far is your favorite professional and personal accomplishments to date yeah thank you Definitely was uh, retiring my parents at the age of 29 years old. I just turned 31. And uh, to give you a background, my parents are immigrants. They came from China in the 80s and uh, in their early 20s. So they didn't go to school here. They didn't learn English. And they were working in a clothing factory or garment factory or sweatshop, <laughs> as some people might call it. And they were working 14 hour days, seven days a week and doing laborious work, making less than minimum wage because they're paid per cents per item that they make. And there's just so much you can do and at a time. So it was less than um, like three, five dollars an hour sometimes. But they knew that they had to to provide for me and my brother and not knowing English, that was the only route they really knew. It was either be a chef at a restaurant or <laughs> the garment factory. Uh, I remember not even uh, eating when I was a kid until 11 p.m. midnight sometimes. I would make the rice and then they, they would come home and cook food. And I just realized that I didn't want them to live that lifestyle anymore. So when I went to my first real estate conference, um, or even earlier before that, I was still at Oracle working at tech. Um, and I had no idea what I was selling, but I just knew that I had to sell as much Oracle database and cloud and all this stuff mumbo jumbo that is not physically visible. Um, and just make accounts, cold call, and I grinded. And I remember being at the office late at night and the, the lights would turn off automatically and I'd just be working in the dark, 8 p.m., 9 p.m. as well too, and just building my list for people to call the next day. And then I had a, a colleague who came in back from the gym and forgot something at the office. It's like, Jenny, what are you still doing here? And I said, I'm looking to buy a house for my parents by the age of 28 and I wanna help them as much as possible and for them not to work anymore. So I just set that goal and I actually bought up my first house at the age of 23 instead, just from the knowledge, connecting with other folks, listening to podcasts like this, just getting educated. Why 28? Let me just fast forward it to 23. And then I wanted to retire my parents by 30 and did it that by 29. Amazing. It's so, it's so, it's good that uh, a lot of people need the target and a big why to get them you know, moving along. So it's really fortuitous that you've, you figured that out early on because a lot of people flounder in their twenties, just kind of like, what am I doing with my life? But I think, you know, having that solidify and that impact from your youth is just like, that, that was a big why to be, to begin with. So I'm very proud of you, Jenny. <laughs> um, so Obviously, you're very driven. You've got that grind mindset in you, you know, busting your butt like 20, not 20, but like overtime beyond the nine to five, right? At, mm -hmm. at your job. You know that you have that grind in you, Jenny. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, stay, staying at work, but beyond the nine to five um, when you worked your tech sales job. Uh, and, and you knew that you eventually had to break out of that that cycle to retire your parents. So what would you, what goal setting techniques mm -hmm. um, did you implement that you, you feel, or you've seen uh, mm -hmm. the most profound, uh, you know, sorry, let me rephrase that. What goal setting techniques and profound small changes that you made into your daily habits created those biggest mm -hmm. impacts? Yeah. Um, so I was commuting to work from San Francisco down to uh, Redwood City, which is almost an hour, an hour 15 drive. So being very purposeful with every single min minute of my day. But even going before going to work is starting my morning with a miracle morning. So what that is, is an acronym called SAVERS. And starting with S as, as is silence. So meditation, prayer, and just being peaceful, even just breath work, even with five deep breaths uh, in and out so that you can calm yourself. 
A is affirmations. So I would just speak, I am Jenny Locke. I'm going to retire my parents. I'm Jenny Locke. I'm going to be 30 under 30 realtor. I'm Jenny Locke. I'm going to meet an amazing seller today. I'm Jenny Locke. I'm going to be a billionaire. Just saying affirmations as if they were true so that it manifests and comes to my life. And then V would be visualization. So I visualize my parents being here um, just cooking in our household, taking care of my future kids, visualizing that lifestyle, being able to travel with them and being able to eat amazing food. I'm a big foodie. So even smelling the food that I was eating in my visualization and using all five senses. E is exercise, getting out there, working out. Um, right now I'm doing orange theory every morning and uh, other days might be just like yoga or other things, just getting active and getting the blood flowing. R is reading. So I read when I'm doing my duty, like number one or two in the morning, but I have my book. Um, I just realized what you said. <laughs> I have my books in there. I'm just like, I'm already there. So at least like read, like my goal is one page a day. And I, you don't just read one page. Um, so it's like, I've been able to go through a lot of uh, self-help and business books and learning about growth and habits. And then the final S is scribing, journaling, and journaling my manifestations, what I'm grateful for, what I'm excited for the day, and a reflection of the day as well, too. And that's one of my strategies. And the other main one is based off of the book, The One Thing by Gary Keller and Jay Papasan, and they share about the GPS. So the GPS, we all have GPSs when we're going on a road trip or even going on a vacation. We plan out where do we want to go, where do we want to eat, but we don't really plan out our life. So actually creating a GPS for your own life and starting with the end in mind. So I actually write my eulogy and I say that I'm going to live to 120 years old. These are everything I'm going to accomplish, take my parents to 50 countries in the world, own a private island resort and be able to heal and become a billionaire and help a thousand people become millionaires as well too. And really think about other people, but then breaking that down through the GPS. So what that is, is one goal, three priorities and five strategies. So let's say your GPS for this year is to make a million dollars. So how am I going to make a million dollars? I have to help, let's say 40 families buy or sell a property in real estate. And then the three strategies, how am I going to help the 30 families to buy and sell in real estate? So it might be 15 sellers, 15 buyers. Um, and the other priority is investing and just creating that passive income. And then I would break down each priority into strategies. Let's say for uh, helping with buyers, I need to learn scripts and practice my script practice and then go into hosting open houses and just calling my database, preparing my social media and also just learning constantly. So putting those five strategies that are time blockable in my calendar that I know that I don't have to think, what am I going to do today? And then every day is very, very purposeful. And another small change, but it's a pretty big change for me that's really impacted my um, productivity is I stopped drinking um, on my 30th birthday. So I'm a little over 31 right now. So been over a year and that has really helped. And the mindset was like, I... I say I'm Jenny from the block. So like, if you know, Jennifer Lopez's song, it's like, I'm still, I'm still Jenny from the block. And I Googled, I'm like, JLo doesn't drink. And she has freaking beautiful skin and she's such a badass. So I'm like, and I just studied other successful people like Tony Robbins and all these other leaders. And I'm like, the common denominator is that they don't drink. And I would get back so many days of my life and so many hours of my life. So it actually costs me more to drink because my effectiveness is not as high and I can't actually give back to the world. So those are my techniques. <laughs> I love that. And to add to that, I feel like I drank a lot in my 20s. And now that I'm in my 30s, that re it really takes you out for the day. So maybe I should implement that into my system. Like hangovers just do not feel the same. You just don't bounce back anymore like you did in your 20s. So more stuff to look forward to now that you're in your 30s, Jenny. But it's good that you <laughs> you knock that out now. Uh, you said something really funny before that made me giggle. So you said that like you, during your morning duty, and I love that you time blocked that. <laughs> Um, you, you, you do a lot of reading. So I, what would you say is your current dookie bookie that you're reading? 
<laughs> what? Oh I just read that up right now. When you drop the dookie, what bookie are you reading right now? What's your What's your uh, morning dump look like? Your morning really? dump. Yeah, I'm reading Going Between Two Books, so Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, and just giving the concrete strategies on how to how successful people did it back then. This book was written a long time ago, but a lot of the successful people um, relay back to Think and Grow Rich. And then the other one is Be Obsessed or Be Average by Grant Cardone. And I realize I have an obsession <laughs> with real estate. Like I literally dream and um, sleep talk real estate. Calvin's like, you were negotiating in your sleep and you're saying this is a bad neighborhood you shouldn't buy in this neighborhood and I'm just like I'm constantly uh, I'm seriously obsessed which is great because I it's better that I'm obsessed about real estate than something else like drugs or alcohol yep uh, one thing that we we can glean from this is like if you do something you're passionate about you'll always have more energy than the than the next person who's just met about it right it's it's it really energizes you to have that you know fire inside you hey we're gonna take a little break but in the meantime here's a shameless plug for one of our amazing sponsors Dr. Hua Win and her husband, Dr. Jaime Gonzalez, both optometrists by trade and owners of multiple multi-million dollar optometry practices in the Dallas area, founded Black Steel Investment Group with a passion to invest to impact. With the foundation forged on three pillars, integrity, community, and legacy, they put their investors at the forefront of everything they do. The couple are both seasoned, full-time, multi-family investors, syndicators, and asset managers who, together with their investors, have invested in over 6,900 units as general and or limited partners in Texas, Arizona, Florida, and the Carolinas, with total assets valued at over $480 million. Juan Jaime are always working to find new investment opportunities for their investors. The couple enjoys traveling the world for delicious food and interesting cultures with their eight-year-old daughter, Athena, and have a puppy named Coco Ali. Now on to the show. So you said a lot of interesting things during our summit, but one, one thing that really stuck out to us in particular is that you mentioned that all of us have seven generations of DNA living inside of us. Mm -hmm. Can you expand on that? Yes, yes. So... I heard this from one of my coaches and once I realized like we're carrying a lot of amazing traits, uh, my hard work, I definitely attribute to my multiple generations and I've done some spiritual healing work and I actually realized I'm a descendant of Genghis Khan. I have a birthmark, like a green birthmark on my tushy and that's uh, signifying that. I like that we're going back to so many butt things. <laughs> Podcast, Jenny is just natural. <laughs> I love like it. It's all real, right? <laughs> um, but when I realized, like, um, he, Genghis Khan, like, he's very infamous and he's done a lot in this world. And I realized I was carrying a lot of pain from the rape, force, and coercion that was caused uh, from it. But he also expanded and expanded our lineage. And I wouldn't be here today without him as well, too. So there was a lot of trauma and um, hatred and everything that was carried down from me that I realized there was all these blockages. And once I started clearing those blockages through doing breath work, meditation, holotropic breathing of where it's you're just using oxygen over oxygenating your body, which we did during our retreat. Um, and you see your ancestors and you see like the things that they were going through. I was able to clear and talk to them and realize like I didn't have to carry their baggage anymore. And being able to release a lot of that baggage, negative baggage, and just keeping the positive, I was able to grow significantly faster because there was a lot of limiting beliefs I had. And I realized it's not just from our society norms, but it was what was passed down to us. So being able to clear that DNA and look at the positives too. And we also passed down seven generations forward. So it's like, I want to make sure where I'm standing today, I set a huge example and it's just the beginning of a whole new era of transforming the world in a more positive light. 
I, I, by the way, I, I love that you use Genghis Khan as your example, because as terrible and pillagey as he was, you can't deny that he was also, you know, very goal driven as well. <laughs> he, like, he set his mind to do something and and he went for it. And he was very we can all say he's very aggressive about it. So, you know, he gets a bad rap, but, you know, he also did a, a lot for himself. Is that a weird analogy? Is that a weird place to take this? <laughs> All right, moving on, Anita. Yeah. Well, uh, another thing that we loved about your workshop was that you encourage our ladies to come constantly with love. And I, I, what does that mean to you? Mm -hmm. Yes. So fear is the lowest frequency out there. And fear is what's keeping people from their highest potential. My hashtag is unlock your potential. I'm here to truly help others to be able to unlock that. But a lot of people are not able to tap into what their potential is because they're living in fear. Oh, what if this goes wrong? How do you go out of state? Do you have property managers? Those are always the questions we get in real estate. But it's just like you just figure it out. And um, love is the highest frequency. So just showing from love, hey, thinking about the jobs we're able to provide, the people we're able to house, the world that we're going to change, being able to get that passive income, being able to see the world with my family, being able to teach others. So constantly coming from love, you're able to be fully present and give so much more to the world. And I realize, like when you're always in the mind, you're thinking. And that's out of fear. So shifting that to feeling. So when you're always like worried and concerned, I just shift and put my hand on my heart. And it's like, what is my heart feeling? And what is my gut saying as well from that? And coming from love, you show so much more presence. And when you're coming from love, people feel it too. And they attract to you. Once I started doing that, like just business came, referrals came. And that's when I scaled significantly faster when I just stopped thinking about what would, could go wrong. I was like, what will go right? And being able to plan, plan to get to that success. Hmm. I love that so much because I feel like <clears throat> I think just more recently in the last decade, but I've been like, you know, thinking about the role of feelings in, in us as human beings, right? And I feel like, you know, a, a lot of our these business books that you read, they're like, oh, just shut out your emotions and just move forward and push forward, right? I, as if you can ignore your feelings about the thing, then you, like, that's that's a sign of success, right? But I, it's like the feelings have such a big role in the way that we evolve as humans, right? It's It should be it shouldn't be ignored because these are our base our canary in the coal mines you know the, like you should when you know something is not a good deal for you or something you're not comfortable with you feel it you know or if something is good then it, it hits it hits well right um so i think that definitely resonates with you and i've never thought about it sort of like a frequency but mm -hmm. I, I i can i can totally see something like that yeah um, I think another thing that you also talked about too is that um, about goal setting, and um, I think that what resonated with me was was saying that like was, was saying setting goals bigger than yourself. Can you also expand on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, as I mentioned, the my hashtag is unlock your potential. Um, but to really dive in is to unlock the potential of my network to realize a dream life that they couldn't even have dreamt of. And that's by giving them the tools and the knowledge and the confidence to be able to take their parents, go travel the world, their family, and not have to worry about money ever again. And just um, really setting, like, how can I make the world a better place? So I set goals for other people. Everything was for my parents. It was like, and I would share that with my meetings when I met with any clients. I was 23 years old when I first started as a real estate agent. It was hard for a lot of people to trust like a 23 year old, but I would just share like, I'm doing this. I'm going to work harder than anyone else because my goal is to help my parents retire and sharing your concept why with other people, they would feel like, wow, I really connect with her. I know she's young. I'm just going to give her a chance because I know I see how hungry she is versus other people just talk about themselves of um, their marketing strategies or other things, but they're not really impacting the bigger why and the bigger purpose. Now it's like, I've helped my parents. It's like, how can I help other people realize their 
goals and their dreams. And having done a lot of my spiritual self-development work as well too through retreats and we're actually opening up our Hawaii Retreat Center in January in Oahu with Lotus Rising Retreats. And my goal is to own an island and provide that healing retreat space for people to go through um, the breath work, the meditation, the goal setting, and a lot of other tactical tools, but also spiritual tools that are within us that we don't know how to tap into, or many people don't know, to be able to truly blossom into our highest self and be able to clear all those blockages, clear all that negative energy of the um, Genghis Khan like, pillaging and raping or whatever you might be carrying on from your generations in your past. Uh, and another saying I always say is like, you're either growing or you're dying. So um, just constantly growing, feeding yourself, feeding yourself in a healthy way with knowledge, good food and um, good people too. Mm, I love that. Yeah. And, you know, for as a plug, um, we're also Sarah ladies also having our second summit at this uh, at the at the retreat center. So if you haven't signed up, we're going to Oahu and and experiencing this beautiful, just beautiful place. I I think we have shared it on our Instagram too, and they have this like this beautiful like fly through of like a of of the property. So we still have some space. So if you guys are interested, we will drop the link and uh, come experience the summit with us at the, the Jenny's beautiful property. I heard there's going to be goat yoga. Is that true, Jenny? Yes, goat yoga. <laughs> yes. yes. And omakase. Yes. <laughs> so exciting. Amazing. Okay. So time for our rapid fire question. <laughs> you love that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Jenny, what is one thing a mentor or family member taught you that still resonates with you today? Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of my mentors, um, his name is Ben, and I was in a program called Abundance, and he always says, leave it better than you found it. So whether that might be a meeting or a conversation, or if you're in a space and you see like a wrapper on the ground, just being able to pick it up, trash it or recycle it in the right place, just leaving every single relationship and interaction, whether you're just walking across on the street, making sure like you're smiling and just wishing people a great day and, and just being able to make the world a better place by all these small little moments. Mm, I love that. Okay. Name someone that is doing something awesome that everyone should know. Yes. My coach is Brittany Turner, also an IE, like how I spell my name. So Brittany with an IE. So she's freaking badass. She has started as a real estate flipper and then developer. And um, she now owns a private island in the British Virgin Islands and uh, also has a mission to be able to save lives. So her mission when she was 12 years old was to be able to end human sex trafficking. And by being able to help within her own backyard to figure out things in the worst areas in Nashville, Tennessee, was able to transform into a beautiful place and now changing an island even after going through crazy hurricanes. And uh, she has a amazing podcast as well too called uh, Broke to Woke. And I love the mission that she's doing. So what she actually does is she heals veterans who have suicidal thoughts, PTSD, and realize like after they go serve and come back that they don't have a purpose in life but we she tells them they do have a purpose in life and they're actually tra um, training them to be a part of this nonprofit called aerial recovery where they go out on missions to be able to help with uh, natural disasters around the world so they've helped out with the maui mm -hmm. fires they're helping out in israel right now they've helped out with the florida hurricanes and the earthquakes that happened around the world because she realized after natural disasters people actually actually try to poach and help um, poach women and children because they're in their lowest times and human sex trafficking goes up significantly, mm. 150% sometimes in certain areas. And by even be, being able to help and actually taking down these tra sex traffickers um, and just seeing so much that she's going to do and she does everything for a force for good. So everyone should follow her, Brittany Turner. <laughs> awesome. So uh, name a book that significantly changed your career. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we shared earlier about the goal setting techniques. So the one thing, so it's spelled O-N-E, um, O-N-E thing by Gary Keller and Jay Papazan. Uh, what is one habit that you have in your daily routine that fundamentally changed who you are as a businesswoman? Mm -hmm. So we founded Zen Coast Homes and Zen Coast University. So it's definitely the Zen breath work that I do every morning, either if it's just breathing for a minute or 10 minutes or doing Wim Hof exercises. But you need to fully just feed into your own cup or else you're pouring from an empty cup. And it's just be able to reduce the noise before we go into our work days. Okay, last question. What is a business lesson that every good investor should learn? Mm -hmm. Every obstacle is for your expansion. So whenever you're going through struggles, realize what is the gift in this moment? What is the world or the universe trying to teach me and for this to be able to serve in a better place? Mm, amazing. I think we, we are at time, but... Jenny, it was wonderful having you on this podcast. I think the, the I love how, you know, the biggest takeaway that we took from this because we are an Asian podcast and we took a fun little whimsical uh, turn into like Asian history, <laughs> which which was fun. So I'm going to like, you know, bring Confucius into the mix just to just to like add another layer to this. Uh, you know, I, I love how, you know, you said that we carry like seven generations of trauma. But we I would. I'll also argue that we carry like seven generations of virtues as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that the one that stuck out that really like made its way to you, especially is the filio, filio piety that you have for your parents. That was your big driving force and, and how you show up to work and the intensity that it brought. Um, and, and so, and, and, and to that, like your intention to, to provide for the next and lay a base work for the next seven generations, um, is is also something that I think carries on where you always like think of the future and the planning. So to to make this a, a to draw the bridge between like the East and the West, you know how the Westerners have blue butt bloods. <laughs> you know the Easterners we have blue butts. <laughs> <laughs> blue butts. All right. Come on. All right. I, I messed up the delivery there. But you guys get where I'm going with this. Like, I, I'm sure every Asian baby, I, I think that's a lot. That's a very common Asian thing, right? The blue butt thing. And then eventually it fades away. Anita, when you give birth, you're, look out for that blue butt on your baby. I have literally no idea what you're talking about. Jenny, you know, right? You know how the babies have the blue butt. It's, what, what is it called? It's called a something birthmark. I, I, I can't, the Genghis I can't, birthmark. It's called the Genghis birthmark. Right, we, we're going to add it to our notes to, to that Wikipedia page. But Jenny, <laughs> thank you so much for being on our podcast. I love how we kept on bringing it back to butts. But you know what? That's what Jenny from the block was known for, too. Ha <laughs> ha. She was notorious for her. I guess that's where you got it from, Jenny. It's, it's, you hit it on more notes than one. I, I love how we ended up here. But Jenny, again, thank you so much for being on our podcast. It's always a pleasure. Uh, you know, hanging out and talking to you. If our listeners want to find you, Jenny, how can they do that? Yeah, they can find me on Instagram, Jenny Lock, J E N N I E L O K, on uh, LinkedIn as well, too. And then our websites are Zen Coast Homes and Zen Coast University.com. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jenny. All right. Thank you. I had so thank much fun you. today. Bye. Thanks for listening. Here's one last note from our lovely sponsors. Hey, Sarah ladies, listeners, Tony the CPA dude here, also your resident Sarah Tax Bro. And with your lovely host, uh, they came up with some great ideas. So Miss Tiffany and Miss Anita here have came up with the tax workout plan. So we're gonna help you get cut up on your taxes, also gonna get help you cut up on your old body. So just like working out, taxes is a monthly thing. Um, you can't ignore it, otherwise you're gonna fall off the cliff. So with the code Sarah ladies, we're gonna give you a nice healthy discount and we're also gonna give the Sarah ladies a kickback just to help support their podcast. I've had a fun time being on their podcast a couple times this year. Uh, they've done great. I really wanna see them blow up in 2023. So with your support, with this creative tax workout plan and also a workout plan in general, we're gonna help you transform your life in 2023. So mention the code Sarah ladies when you talk to me, you can email me at Tony at the CPA dude, um, text me at 928 CPA dude, TikTok's the CPA dude, website's the CPA dude.com. Everything's the CPA dude. 
So Sarah Ladies is your special code here and let's make this year great. Thank you for tuning in to the Sarah Ladies podcast hosted by Anita Wong and Tiffany Lee. Special thanks to Subtle Asian Real Estate LLC, our parent company. If you enjoyed our show, please leave us a review or follow Sarah Ladies on Spotify and Instagram at Subtle Real Estate. You can also click on our show notes to subscribe to our newsletters to stay on top of our news and upcoming events. Until next time, pod squatters.